Hey everyone, welcome to, to the fourth interview already. Uh, today we have David, David Hensel, co-founder at MaxCDN, a content delivery network headquartered in Los Angeles. Uh, David, hey uh, my first question to you, and it's something I'm very interested in, is your story. Why did you choose, your, why did you choose the path of entrepreneurship? I guess I was always an entrepreneur. I dropped out of school at a fairly young age and just started working. And yeah, I guess I was a trouble student. I didn't really fit in. You know, I was the, the square peg in a round hole and I was just better off doing my own thing. Uh -huh. And it worked out well. Uh -huh. So you, you're like, you're like the, the big, the big uh, guys in the industry that dropped out of school. But did you drop out of college or even earlier? Even earlier, yeah. even earlier. Wow, yeah. wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, I've I've been always very hungry in terms of learning. I consume a ton of books and take online courses. I mean, back then I didn't take online courses, but uh, I went to uh, school in the evening in for topics that were of my interest. But you know, I didn't didn't really like the overall thing. When I dropped out of school, I went to the Arbeitsamt. In Germany, it's it's an institution where they list all possible jobs, and I l read through all jobs that you can possibly do or that they, they have in their their archive, and I didn't like any of them, and uh, so I decided first to learn languages to become a foreign language correspondent, not with intention to ever work in this this job, but I want to you know be able to speak languages, and um, yeah, then I did this for two years, learned English and Spanish. And then I did my civil service in Germany. You either have to do military or civil service. I picked civil service. And during this time, I discovered my love for computers again and uh, started a company that was maintaining the, the networks, the in-house networks of, of small businesses in Germany. And yeah, this was my first enterprise, so uh -huh. to say. Cool. What were some of the fears and doubts that you had when you first started out. Uh, maybe, maybe it's too low to go when you dropped out of college, but maybe before you started MaxCDN. What were some of the fears and doubt that you went through? When I started out doing my own thing and being an entrepreneur, um, I was still living at home. I was fairly young, so there were not, you know, that many fears versus, you know, if I'd be now I have, you know, I'm, I'm married and I have a child. Being and, you know, becoming an entrepreneur at this stage in my life would have been a lot harder and there would have been a lot more fears involved. But, you know, I've been, been doing this since a very young age and I had, you know, I could have always fall back and say like, you know, hey, mom, I don't have any money. You know, give, give, give me food. <laughs> so there was like oh, always a very good safety net. So there were no real fears in terms of doing this. I just did it, you know, without thinking too much about it. Mm -hmm. But in terms of fears, there's, you know, there have been a lot of fears in my life. Um, I call myself a recovering introvert. And um, I missed a lot of things. I missed a lot of good opportunities in, in my life because I was, you know, more, I was directed by fear. I made my decisions out of fear. And a few years ago, my yoga instructor said something that was very powerful. She said, every decision in life you either make out of love or out of fear. And this hit me so hard that I almost fell out of downward facing dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was something that I always knew, but you know, I never really could put my finger on it or you know, describe it in you know that precise. And since I know this, I've been paying very close attention in terms of if I'm making my decisions out of love or out of fear. And this had a giant impact on my life, on business and on my private life. An example in business, I always hated selling. I always felt like a used car salesman pushing stuff on people, you know, pushing them to close, and this never really felt right. So, um, but if you sell out of love, you sell somebody a product that they really need. You really fulfill a need for this person. You know, you don't you you just give this person something. If you would sell out of fear, the predominant thoughts in your mind would be how much money you make on this transaction, or you have to pay your mortgage. Etc. Etc. Right, and I believe this radiates out, and the people feel this, and then they, you know, they they're much more likely to buy if you sell out of love. It becomes much much easier. 
and in in my personal life with my wife and are you in a relationship yeah 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 i'm getting married this year actually oh awesome yeah Congratulations. <laughs> thank great. you so you know you have the the honey do lists you know like where your wife tells you or your girlfriend like hey could you do this or that around the house could you you know hang up this picture or you know put this thing together that you bought at ikea type of thing and I hate this type of work. I, it, I hate it with a passion. I prefer to do my taxes and pay it you know, <laughs> versus doing this type of work. And I always did these, these tasks out of fear because I didn't want conflict with my wife. And once I understood this concept with the love and fear, I start, I start out of fear because I still don't like this type of work. But then I do it out of love because I want to make my house nicer and I want to make my wife happy. And... All of a sudden, this, the process of doing the work became much more enjoyable, and um, uh, the result is much better. And then I don't have a fight with my wife later on because it's not up to her spec, you know, in terms of the, the pictures. Yeah. And I've been using this uh, at work a lot as well. For example, my assistant was supposed to send out a company-wide email, you know, with updates from each department so people know what's going on. And um, every time she gave me the draft, there was, were a million things we had to correct. And I sat it down and told her, hey, you're doing this out of love and uh, out of fear and not out of love. And she looked at me like, what do you want? And then I <laughs> explained to her, if she would do this out of love, she would put in the effort to really understand what each department is doing, even though she's not super technical. And she would write in a way that everybody who receives this newsletter would get the maximum benefit out of it, you know, and... Once I explained this to her, it it became, you know, I didn't have to check them anymore after two or three times. So we, could, we were able to just send them out. Or if somebody sends me a spreadsheet and one column, you know, so supposed to be dollars and he didn't convert it into dollars, um, it's just the plain number. I send it back to him, just like have him check it again, because only if all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed, then people have been really doing it with, with love and like attention to detail and so it's like a good barometer to see, you know, what mm -hmm. people do. Mm -hmm. Isn't it funny how just just a change in perception can can have such a big impact in our lives, personal or business? You said you started out uh, early. What does it mean early in terms of age? When did you start your first business? I started my first business when I was <clears throat> 19 years old. Wow. Wow. I started when I was 21, so I wanted to see if, <laughs> <laughs> if you could beat me to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my, I always wanted to move to the US. I visited LA the first time when I was 18, and I knew this is the place where I want to move to. Um, I just, you know, not having uh, a formal degree, I couldn't get an H1B, so the visa situation was a little tricky. So, you know, I, I went back and I started my business. And after a few years of, of doing this, I sold my e-commerce business, which, um, you know, first I had my IT support business. And one of my customers was selling hookahs, you know, nagile, mm -hmm, water pipe, mm -hmm, shisha. Mm -hmm. And um, he was pushing me hard to sell these products online because he had no idea on, on how this works. And I was very resistant because I was busy with my normal business. But he was very persistent, so I just did it to shut him up. It's like put up a website, you know, and, and start selling it. And this really blew up like crazy. So I stopped my IT support and um, started focusing on e-commerce and um, grew a few more stores in different verticals. And then like eight years ago or so, I sold them and finally had the money to get my investor visa and, and move here to the U.S. And mm -hmm. in 09, this is when we started MaxCDN. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. Um, cool. Uh, let's talk about work-life balance. We, we, we talked a bit about this on Twitter at one point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you, mm -hmm. you are kind of a big fan of, of this topic. Mm -hmm. I tried a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, approaches, even to have this clear line between work and, work and life. Mm -hmm. But I realized that mixing, mixing the two works best uh, works best best for me as being a, a, a creative person and uh, an entrepreneur mm -hmm. what is working for you do you still we do you still believe we can uh, uh, 
we can draw this this very clear line between the two or in this new day and age they're kind of they kind of complete each other i think it's pretty blurred because you know if you really love what you're doing if you enjoy your work then it's you know woven throughout your entire life you know you have like dinners with people that are somewhat work related etc cetera, etc cetera. you have friends that are somewhat work related and you know you just talk about especially when an entrepreneur you for whatever reason you're surrounded by other entrepreneurs and then this is just the topic that you talk about the balance that you have to find or that i have to find is between you know having a kid and and my wife to how, how to balance these things and and i do this by having strict times or strict events you know for um where i'm at home for example i always put my daughter to bed i, I make sure I, I you know i leave the office early so i can have dinner with my wife and my daughter walk the dogs and stuff like this and then put my daughter down it's like you know having having these it's it's also a nice way to break up the day i do this and you know then my, I, I sleep less than my wife, less hours, and she, she goes to bed at some point, and then I still work a little bit, so it's kind of yeah. works out somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and, and another important thing in terms of work-life balance, um, I start to blend them more and more in terms of I we had a roles and responsibility meeting in the office, and I came home, and my um, I'm sitting on the couch. My, my daughter was fairly young, she was still in diapers and she needed a diaper change and my wife got really upset that i was not standing up changing her diaper and i thought how the heck should i know that it's my turn now and i thought like oh we never discussed roles and responsibilities in our house before you know and um the next morning we sat down and we you know went through the roles and responsibilities in the household and once we cleared this out and defined this and wrote it down, there was no more friction. Like 80% of the tension in our relationship was evaporated, you know, so it was very powerful. And then I thought like, huh, if this works, maybe I'll bring more things over from work. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I believe that, you know, an, an organization, a business is, you, you do all these things you do in a business, like performance reviews, mission, vision, regular meetings, measuring certain KPIs, all these things you do to make a group of people successful, right? And to align them and make sure there's no friction. So all this stuff translates to your private life as well. And so I started to do our, um, I sat down with my wife on a, on a regular cadence once a week, and we've been working on our personal mission and vision or our family mission and vision, and on our 90-day um, plan and our annual plan, five-year plan, and this has brought a lot of alignment. And I believe if more people will do this, you, you'll you not, you know, there's a lot of divorces going on where people just like grow apart. But if you do this, you, you get this alignment together, you know, by really knowing what do we want out of life, you know, and we, you'll, you'll find your North Star and you walk towards this together. Cool. Or um, we also did something that was very effective here at Maxi and was our um, our core values that we developed, the core values that we live by, basically what defines us as, as Max City Enters. And we have them hanging all over here in, in, in the office on the wall and we really live by it. And it's a very powerful management tool that I can, one of the core values is um, own it. We build trust through total accountability. And in case some, some, you know, one of my team members is dropping the ball, it's very easy. I don't have to talk a lot. I just say, hey man, you know, own it. One of our core values and they go like, yeah, man, fuck, I know. So, so, and I want to do the same, oh, we're doing the same thing for our private life. My daughter is only two and a half, but once she, you know, she, she understands more, we want to have, we will have these on the wall in our house and it will be a management tool for me. If, you know, she does something that doesn't align with our core values, then I can say, Hey honey, look, you know, this is not what we do. These are the things that we do. And yeah, I think it's going to be very powerful. Super cool. I, I love this idea. I love this. And I, I realized that uh, while you were working, that the moment we, we kind of eliminated a lot of tension in our relationship was the moment we decided uh, which tasks uh, I do and which are the ones that she does. So, yeah, that's, that's really powerful. And I, it's, I believe it's so powerful that I think more people need to know about this. And I started writing a book on the side mm -hmm. on, about this topic. 
uh, because I've and I talked to a lot of people about this concept because I believe it's you know it's so, so powerful and I heard very cool stories in terms of how this transformed people's relationships once they started to sit down together and have budget meetings once once a month you know like you know where both partners are aligned and know like what's really going on in their finance world a friend of mine just got engaged to his long-term girlfriend and she wanted to have this crazy crazy wedding wanted to spend a lot of money on it and he was venting towards me like hey man she's crazy she wants to spend so much money we want to buy a house soon and then you know this is gonna push us out so far and like so flipping out and asking like hey man do you sit down and do your budgets together? Does she know how much money you have on the side, how much money you make, what big expenses are coming up? And I gave him the analogy of like, um, he, he works with me. Our, uh, if, if our VP of engineering would never say, hey, I want to buy routers for $30 million because he knows it's not in the budget, he would not even bring this up. Mm-hmm. And then he sat down with his fiance and um, they went through their finances and then they made a budget and then they were even under the budget that he proposed and uh, I had the same effect uh, I made my wife CFO and before I always had to push her to you know not to overspend on things and now it's completely reversed she she tells me like hey we can't do this we already did this and this and this and I'm like well, who are you <laughs> so it's, it, it's very powerful so th- this is why I decided to write a book about this and mm-hmm. I'm very and- busy with Max CDN so I don't know when when this will be finished but yeah, is the know, book yeah. just about personal relationships or also about business relationships? No, it's 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 a guide to how you do certain things in business, like how do you do, you know, a vision statement, how you do your mission statement, how do you develop your core values, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. First, it's going to start out with a few stories that bring the point across how valuable it is to have mission and vision in your business and also in your private life etc etc with budgets with kpis and then the back part of the book will be more of a workbook how you develop these things you know and, and guides on, on how to develop mm-hmm, these things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cool uh are you a perfectionist would you call yourself a perfectionist i am I like to launch stuff and I'm, I'm a firm believer if you wait too long, if you're not embarrassed about the product that you're shipping, you've waited too long. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I like to get stuff out there and then get to perfection over time, you know, kind of get out and do it in iterations because otherwise things will just not launch. How, you know, do, you, how do you deal with the embarrassment of launching a product that, that you actually know is not at the the perfect format you've imagined it? Um, I think you don't really have a choice. <laughs> you know, time. <laughs> yeah, you, you can only do this if you're in a very comfortable position where, you know, you're the market leader and you're swimming in cash and you want to launch a new product and you can take your time, sweet time to actually develop something and make it super nice and clean. But, you know, the, if you, you have to compete in the market, you know, and... You have to get it to market so people can use it. And often you design something to the T and you don't give it to customers to actually really work with. You know, you get so much valuable feedback. You know, it, it's always, it's, uh, I'm missing the word in English. It's never it's really fully formed. It's like, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's constantly evolving. I think like businesses and products have to constantly evolve to, to really fit the needs or the, you know, the, the change, change of trends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I see I see I see clients and especially coaches, consultants, designers that they they get so stuck in the idea of launching a website mm-hmm. that they wait until they have this perfect website with about page, services page, seven articles already published, three free freebies, a great funnel and, and all that stuff and even even paid courses but they don't realize that they need to launch and then add those pages, articles, freebies, courses yep, at, yep, at, yep, at, a late, at a later time. And, but but they, get, yeah. they get so stuck in, in, in this. And I had a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of issues with uh, perfectionism. And I manage, I, I can say, like you said, you are a, rec- yes, a, you are a recovering uh, introvert. I can say I'm a recovering 
uh, yeah, I'm a recovering uh, perfectionist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it gave me so many, so many headaches in, in the past. And especially this new business that I launched, doing business coaching. Uh, mm -hmm. I had the idea for over two years. But I was so afraid to launch it and put myself out there. And even doing mm -hmm. this, uh, even doing this uh, interviews, it's, it's a big stretch for me. Because I wanted to do these interviews for a few months now. But I got so, so stuck in the idea of... Will it Making have any it super perfect. exactly, or yeah. will people reply? Will I get to interview anyone and and all those negative voices? But mm -hmm. once I realized that they are just that, just negative voices, it became much easier to to kind of work towards my dreams. Mm -hmm. I heard this. I don't know where I heard this. It's called killing ants, and ants stands for automatic negative thoughts, you know, and <laughs> as an entrepreneur, you always have to, you know, make sure you, you kill, you kill these ants. W one thing I went through a very tough time and I blogged about this on my blog as well. I went through a very tough time around two years ago, um, where within a, a span of two months, a lot of stuff went down. My daughter was born, which was awesome, but you know, also very stressful having a kid really changes up your life. Um, my mother passed away two weeks later mm -hmm. and my grandma passed away three weeks later and my wife had two surgeries related to giving birth like something did not go right and um, and business was going crazy on top of it so it was like the the ultimate storm and the co-worker asked me hey man how are you how can you still perform like what's your secret and I thought like that's, that's, a, that's a good question I have no idea and then I thought about this more and more and um, I realized that it's mainly two things that help me to to go through these things, to through crazy times without you know breaking. One is acceptance. You know, if you can accept, no matter how bad the situation is, if you can just accept this is what it is, then you can act. Otherwise, you just react, right? You can say like, hey, these are the pieces that I have on the board, and this is what I can move right now, and. Um, you know, this takes all this, these noises out of your head. Once you say like, you know, like, this is what it is, you know, before it's like, oh my God, it's so bad and this is going to happen in the future and blah, blah, you know, just like, whatever, this is what is task at hand and then just crank. And uh, there's something called the serenity prayer, you know, the serenity prayer, I can't recite it. It's like something along the lines, like, give me the, the power to change things I can change, give me the... The serenity uh, to accept the things I cannot change, right? Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, accept the things I can't change and the wisdom to know which one is which, you know. True, true. For an entrepreneur, that's, 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 that's very important to be able to do this. Also, so you, so you can be calm and, you know, steer the ship through a rough sea because, you know, you can't be it, on it, top and freak out. It can get rough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it, it usually does. <laughs> The second thing that really helps me is um, is this here. I have this little gratitude stone that uh -huh. I pick up every morning when I, you know, with my credit cards and my uh, my phone, and I go through the things that I'm grateful for while just walking to the car. It's a very quick exercise, and this puts me into an all as well state of mind. And when I'm in the state of mind, um, all these problems that you deal with throughout the day, you know, uh, you know, like the problem, the biggest problem that you have right now. It's probably just a sand corn in the grand scheme of things. You know, like in, in two months from now or even a week from now, you, you don't even think about it anymore, you know. And this is very important as, as an entrepreneur because you always you always have to deal with stuff. You know, it's it's never just – it's no nine to five where, you know, the big problems are not your problems. You have to own the problems, right? And so I have this stone in my pocket and throughout the day, sometimes I get stressed out over something and then I feel the stone in my pocket and this brings me back into this all's well state of mind mind thinking like hey actually everything's great you know i'm healthy my wife's healthy my daughter's healthy you know it's life's beautiful you know brings you to this you know elevated state of mind mm -hmm. and at the end of the day i take the stone out of my pocket you know when i um you know get my cards out and stuff uh and i go through the things that went great this day because often you have something annoying an annoying conversation with a customer at 5 p.m or something like this and then you think, oh my God, the whole day sucked. 
but it did not suck. You know, there he got a lot of done in the lot of stuff done in the morning, and you know, it's just it's like yeah. It's, and if I've been doing this for a very long time, and I believe I've built up my gratitude muscle quite a bit, and this is why I was able to sustain this storm back mm-hmm. then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that leads me to my next question: How do you deal with stressful days? You had the you had you have the gratitude stone. Do you do anything else besides that? Um, I have a morning routine. I I get up at five thirty and then I go to yoga at six, and um, you know I do hot yoga for one hour and I do this five times a week, and this is also something that makes me very centered and calm and helps me to you know sustain stress before. When it was stressful times and when I was traveling on top of it, I got sick a lot. You know, if somebody with a cold just came close to me, it was like I was toast. And since I've been doing this this yoga routine, this really made me very strong in terms of my immune system and also in terms of how much pressure I can take on. It's like a, you know, really cleans your head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you do then, yoga for for one hour. Do you do with someone or? No, there's, uh, I go to Core Power Yoga. It's a chain here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. They have like 150 stores um, around the U.S. So it's, it's very nice when, when you travel. You cool. often find one there as well. Cool. Um, I never tried hot yoga. I do some yoga every night for about 15, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. But it's just, uh, just the classics, the downward dog and sun, sun salutations and all that stuff. But it really ha- helps me uh, get centered. That's, uh, that's really cool. And I, um, I fell out of my meditation habit. I used to meditate every morning, but, you know, sometimes you f- I fall out of my routines and then, you know, I, I get back in. It's always a, a dance. True. But, and, and someone told me, one of, the, one of the people that I interviewed, and she said this very wise, wise thing. Uh, she said that sh- discipline is not just about uh, sticking to something for years, like meditation. Sometimes you just need to, you kind of feel the need to do something else. Mm -hmm. And then you do that for a few months or even years. And then it's okay to to get back to meditation because you probably need it more and more. Because Mm -hmm. I used used to get so so mad at myself for not sticking Mm -hmm. with certain habits. But then I realized that it's much better to trust myself and trust what my body and my spirit is telling me that it's good for myself at this moment in time. So that was, that was an, another very powerful uh, switch in, in perception for, for me. One thing that I have is I have restart routines. Once, mm-hmm. I, um, once I fall out of my, my habits and routines, I do these restart routines. And they might sound silly, but it really works for me. Um, so... For example, one indicator that I'm out of sync is I usually do inbox zero. So I basically take care of all emails. I either delegate them away or archive them. So at the end of the day, my inbox is clean. There's nothing in there. And um, when I get overwhelmed and stressed, then, you know, it's, it's a clear indicator. It's like the best measurement point for me is like, oh, my inbox is not clean, you know, for two, three days. And I, I know I'm, I'm out of my rhythm. And then I have, have a restart routine that... Um, or also when I'm stop going to yoga for whatever reason, when I travel and then I have to have to get back into it. And my restart routine is like I have to, you know, take care of myself. You know, for example, I don't know, get a haircut, get a massage or something like this, and then you know, say, okay, now we we get back into the the good habits. You know, mm-hmm. same with eating healthy, not eating a lot of carbs or whatever it is that I you know put on my my agenda to do. Once I fall out of it, I go, okay, restart routine, and then get back into it. <laughs> true, true. I, I, I'm going through a diet right now. No, no dairy because it's, it's affecting my skin and no sugar right now. And I have a jar of Nutella right here, like two <laughs> feet away. <laughs> but I promise, I promise myself that I will only eat on my birthday, which is uh, n- next week, next Saturday. Mm-hmm. But it's so tough. <laughs> uh-huh. If you want to do something, it's it's not that tough, right? If you well, I do want it. I I I, I went for almost six months without gluten, dairy, or sugar, and mm-hmm. it was tough. But I I I saw great results. So yeah, I've been vegetarian I... for twenty years now and vegan wow. for a year and a half or so. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, I know you're a big reader. Mm-hmm. You you read a lot of uh, books and you also review uh, some of them on on the on your blog. Mm-hmm. Um, can you recommend a book that played like the biggest or one of the biggest roles in your life? It's funny that you ask. Every time when I interview somebody that I want to hire, I ask them one of the questions that I ask is, "What are the three books that had the biggest influence in your life, and what is the book that you're currently reading?" Mm-hmm. And if somebody's you know, doesn't have really good answers for this. It's it's a clear indicator that he's not in a growth mindset, at least to me. You know, um, I'm a big fan of Napoleon Hill books. Uh, you know, Think and Grow Rich was one of uh, I read this a very long time ago. This influenced me a lot, and The Laws of Success was also something that was 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 very very impactful to me. Outwitting the Devil is is I think is one of my favorite ones. Have you read it? I've heard about it. I've heard about it, but I never read it. So is it, is it this, that good? It's it's really amazing. It really blew me away. In this book, he interviews the devil, quote unquote, mm-hmm. right? And he's asking the devil, "What is the devil doing to not to make us not reach our goals? Uh-huh. And which tools the devil has? And the biggest tool that the devil has is fear. You know, which brings you back to my love and fear thing. You know, um, it, it's a really good read. He wrote it. Um, I don't know, 50 years ago or so, and it, it was so critical towards the church, towards the school system, and towards society that he didn't dare to publish it. You know, actually, his, his wife forced him not to publish it because she was scared that they get killed. So, and like a few years ago, it was released, and it, it, it's it's really really good. Wow. Okay. I know my my neighbor has it, so I'm gonna go and grab it probably grab it. after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, I, I just want to talk a bit more about uh, you being a recovering introvert. And mm-hmm. um, I kind of was like that as well until I went through a depression about four years ago. Mm-hmm. And it kind of resetted my whole system, friends, uh, view about on life and, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it gave me the confidence to, to build my own life. Mm-hmm. Uh, what has worked for you to, to become... Uh, less introvert or this recovering introvert one thing that had a really big impact on me was Toastmasters Mm -hmm. Toastmasters Toastmasters.org you can go there and they have um, clubs all over the world in LA alone I think there's 50 clubs or something like this It's, it's pretty extreme and they teach you how to become a good public speaker and you know they also teach you leadership skills etc etc and I've been doing this for quite some time, and it's uh, it's very powerful. It's not it doesn't only teach you public speaking; it teaches you a lot more things, and um, it's it's super affordable. It costs like next to nothing. It's like depending on the club, it's like twenty bucks a month or less, mm-hmm. and you know, they have meetings every week. Cool. This was one thing that 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 really impacted me. That stretched you. Cool, cool, cool. Um. When do you when do you believe you will finish the book and and get it get it published? Do you want to self publish? Are you working with an agency? Right now, I'm just um, friends of mine have published books and I've been chatting with them, um, but I'll I'll just I continue to to add content to it and see where 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 it takes me. Mm-hmm. I've like I just wanna and. Yeah, I haven't thought too much about which channel I'm going to use, you know, but I'll just, you know, I'm going to get it done first and then I'll figure it out. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, this was it. Uh, we, we, we stick to 30-something minutes, so I'm happy about that. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for joining and thank you for sharing so, mu- so, much, uh, so much good stuff with us. And uh, if you want to, to learn more about uh, David, you can visit davidhensel.com or if, you, if you're looking for a content delivery network, definitely maxcdn.com. Thank you. <laughs>